Number 14. Why are most solid ionic compounds electrically non-conductive, whereas aqueous solutions of ionic compounds are good conductors? And then, would you expect a liquid, which is molten, ionic compound to be electrically uh, conductive or non-conductive? And then explain. Okay, so we have basically three states here that we have to talk about in, uh, in terms of electrically uh, electrical conductivity, right? We got solids, aqueous, and a liquid. So before we write out the three states, what I'm going to say is, what constitutes something being electrically conductive? So if you want to, or if a species or a substance needs to uh, conduct electricity, so become electrically conductive, this substance has to be, uh, they, they, the, the, the word here is that the substance has to contain, so has to has to contain something called mobile, uh, we'll say mobile species. Pretty, uh, pretty vague, right? But um, it, it's, a, it's a generally vague term because we're trying to, to talk about everything that can conduct electricity. So in this case, we're specifically talking about ionic compounds, right? We have solid ionic compounds, aqueous ionic compounds, liquid ionic compounds. So for this question to work specifically, the substance here is an ionic compound. And remember that an ionic compound is just a metal and a nonmetal. So coming together. Or a metal and a polyatomic or two polyatomics right? But you have to have some type of charge here. So let's just leave it like that. So this ionic compound, this substance has to contain mobile species. Now, mobile, we can use it in the general term, right? If somebody is mobile or mobile, right? F this, a mobile. Where is that from? Great, great, great movie. Um, but yeah, so if something's mobile or mobile, uh, they can move around. So move around, uh, freely moving, that is the definition of being mobile. And in this case, in chemistry, these ionic compounds have to have freely uh, moving or freely floating, maybe we'll say for chemistry, so freely floating, moving around species. And in this case, the species are going to be the electrons because that's where the charges come in. So now let's think of a, I don't know, let's think of an ionic compound. The most uh, general one that I could think of off the top of my head is sodium chloride, aka table salt, NaCl. And we have NaCl solid. We have NaCl aqueous. And we have NaCl liquid. So basically, if we had a wire linked up to a light bulb, right, and we tried to stick it into a solid, literally just, you know, the, 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 the table salt that you have that you buy at the store, right, if you just stick a probe in it and see if it turns on a light bulb, Hmm, it's not gonna, right? So in this case, they did say that the solid ionic compounds are non-conductive. These, the solid ones, do not conduct electricity. So do not conduct electricity. But why is that? Well, it's got to go back to the definition. Keep in mind, electricity... Keep in mind that these substances, the ionic compounds, have to be mobile, right? Those electrons should be freely floating, right? Or, or, you know, the electrons are contained with the atoms, right? And those atoms should be freely floating. But if you have NaCl solid, keep in mind that generally the descriptions of solids, they are very, very tight together, right? In this case, solids, since they are very, very tight together in their own network, right? Their lattice, uh, these are not mobile. 
They don't move around. Nothing moves. A solid stays in place. For table salt, at least. So we call this immobile. And since nothing is moving, you don't have those electrons freely floating, right, or moving around, that's why it does not conduct electricity, because the mobile part, the free-floating electrons, nothing is moving. So this is trapped in your lattice. You have a lattice of sodium chloride table salt, um, which produces that crystalline structure that you see when you, you know, you look at salt. So that's why... Um, Solid ionic compounds, they're non-conductive because they're not in a mobile state. But NaCl aqueous, AQ, means that you are in water. So now if you can picture putting, well, basically boiling water, right? If you boil water and then you throw salt in it, make sure to always put your salt in after the water boils. Don't put your salt in before uh, you boil the water. Always boil the water first, and then you add the salt, and then you put your pasta. But that's cooking cooking with Christina. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we have sodium chloride in water, right? And now let's picture it. If we throw in that sodium chloride in water, well, this is going to dissolve. The NaCl dissolves. We're assuming that, you know, you're not adding a ton. You're not super saturating the solution. Uh, dissolves. And then you say to yourself, well, what's going on, right? The water is boiling, it's moving all over the place, right? Is that sodium and the chlorine, are they moving around as well? You got it, for sure. They move with the water. So these electrons and, and these, you know, atoms, you have Na plus and Cl minus now being solvated by the water, because the water has way more intermolecular attractions uh, with the Na plus and the Cl minus than they do together. So that's why it breaks up. Um, but the Na plus and the Cl minus, they will be moving around with the water. Right? They'll be boiling all over the place. So this is mobile. So they move. And since it's mobile, it will um, be electrically conductive. So if now you have water and salt and you try to stick a probe in it, you know, attach it to the light bulb, um, it's going to turn on, right? Don't try that at home. <laughs> but anyway, in, in theory, right, it should turn on. So now the next thing is, well, what about molten ionic compounds? Basically, when you take your solid and instead of throwing it in water, you just, you know, jack up the heat so much that you basically melt the, uh, the NaCl. And think about it in terms of what a liquid looks like, right? You could always go back to water, right? Or any type of liquid, right? But the liquid will now have the freedom to move around, right? The water in a water bottle, it moves around. And I'm losing my voice. That's fun. <laughs> Why does this always happen? But it's back. But anyway, now these uh, atoms, right? The Na, the Cl, the electrons, they are free to move. And that's called mobile. They're mobile. And because of that, would you expect liquid ionic compounds to be electrically conductive? You got it. They can conduct electricity. They are electrically conductive. Electricity. Electricity. Okay. Um, so that's basically this, this question in a nutshell. So all ionic solids, they're immobile, can't conduct electricity. But if you have aqueous, if you have liquids for your solids, um, they will conduct electricity because those species are mobile. They're able to move around. Um, and that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in more questions. Um, so yeah, enjoy your day. Keep studying hard. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.